Alrighty, so to get started for this one, I just have an icosphere in the center that I subdivided a few times. Then I have a camera pointed at it right here. Then if I head over to the shading workspace, I just have my 3D viewport and my node editor here. Then for the lighting, if I go over to render preview, I'm just going to uncheck scene world and I'm using the built-in forest 3D lighting that Blender already has. And I will be using the cycles renderer, but you can feel free to use Eevee or um, the supported feature set because they'll both all work the same. Anyways, to get started, we'll press new and I'll just type in parrot. I'll hit shift A and search for a wave texture, just like this, because this is what we're going to be using to make those little divots in the side of the carrot. So then with this selected, I'll press Control and T, which is going to bring this up. And if it doesn't bring this up for you, you can go to Edit and Preferences, and then Add-on, search up the Node Wrangler add-on like this, and hit this checkbox, which will give you the shortcut. So remember that is Control T with the texture selected. Now we Control Shift and left click this, we have a preview of what's going on. So currently we're going to be switching this to Object, and then we're going to switch the X to a Z, so everything is rotated at 90 degrees. Obviously, you can use whichever axis you want, but I'm going to be using Z because we're going to be making our carrots up and down, and then we can uh, um, uh, put it on our carrots, and then we can rotate them however we want afterwards. So then we're going to be switching this scale here to a 4, and then I'm going to switch the distortion on this to an 8.2, just to get everything sort of warping. Then the detail, I'm going to move up to a 10, and then the detail roughness to a 0.61. So we roughen everything up, but currently these lines are sort of too similar, so we're going to mess with the phase offset, but if we do it like this, it doesn't really change anything. So we need to do it sort of randomly with a texture of some sort. And to clarify this, I'm going to also hit Shift A and do a map range first before we do that. And this map range is going to allow us to up some contrast here. So we're going to bring this from maximum to 0.15, so we bring our whites in so that these aren't taking up too much space. Now we'll mess with the phase offset. So shift A, I'll search for a noise texture, and this is going to be the, basically the factor that we're using to mess with that. So if I control shift and left click this noise texture, I'm going to adjust him a little bit. Also I'll hit shift A and search for a map range node, place him after the factor so we can preview that. And I'm just going to give us some more space here so that we can see a little bit better, like this. So now on this noise texture, I'm going to switch his scale down to a 1, and then the detail up to a 10, and I'll put the roughness at a 0.2. Then on the map range, because currently everything is so blurry, we need to up the contrast. So I'm going to bring this from minimum to a 0.3, and then from max to a 0.7, like so. Then the 2 minimum, I'm going to bring down to a negative 5, and then the 2 maximum, I'm going to bring up to a 5, and then uncheck clamp, so that we have something like this. So I'm going to take this result and plug it into our phase offset. Now if we preview the map range here, we have this, and then if we cut this off, it's like this, but this one will give us some cool randomness in the divots. Nice. So now we need to be affecting where we want these divots, because obviously they're not all around the carrot. So we're going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to search for another noise texture, just like this. Take this vector and plug it in. Control Shift and left click to preview. I'm going to switch this scale to a 10, the detail up to a 10 as well and then we'll leave the roughness there. So now I'm going to hit Shift A and search for a math node, like this, place it afterwards, factor to value. I'm going to change the function to greater than, and then I'm going to leave this on a 0.55, right here. So this is going to be telling us where we want the little divots to be. So then I'll hit Shift A and search for a mix RGB. This is going to be our factor, the value of the factor of the mix RGB. And then this result will go into color two, and then color one will be a pure white. So that's a value of one. Now if we control shift and left click him, we can see where we have all of our divots. Currently this is on a sphere, so it's not looking quite right, but once we put it on our carrot model at the very end of this, it'll start looking proper. Anyways, next up is plugging this guy into our bump. So I'll hit shift A, search for bump node. I'm going to take this color into our height and the strength down to a 0.25. So if we plug our normal into the normal, and then control shift and left click to preview this, ellipse the uncheck invert. And we have our little divots in our carrot where sort of they've been cut like that. Nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these guys and I'm gonna grab them and move them down here so, so that they're lined up a little bit better. And then I'll take this and then grab him and move him up here, or with the mix node as well. Just like this so that everything's a little bit more organized. So now we're gonna plug in our colors. So I'll hit shift A and I'm gonna search for a mix RGB up here. I'm going to take this color and put it into our factor. 
And then on color one, I'll go ahead and give you a hex value. It's going to be our lighter color. That is going to be a F5B55F. Again, that is an F5B55F, just like that. Then this color two is going to be an ED9121. Again, that is an ED9121, just like this. So if we can chill shift and left click, we can see that we now have our colors. Nice. I'll hit Shift A and search for a two saturation node afterwards so we can adjust these as we need and plug this color into the shader. Now if we can chill shift and left click, we can preview what's going on. If you think these are too bright of a carrot, you can always lower the value a little bit and maybe switch the hue to like a 0.485, not 785, 0.485, like that. And then you get more of a darker orange color. But that's up to personal preference and what you're going for in what you want your colors to look like. So now that we've done our colors, I'm gonna be plugging in some bump for the main part of the carrot because it's not perfectly smooth as is being displayed right now. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a noise texture. Grab him, move him down here. And I'll take this vector into our noise texture vector and Control Shift and left click him. I'm gonna change the detail on this guy to a six and that's all I'll change on him. Then I'm gonna plug him into a mix node. So Shift A, search for a mix RGB. And because we don't want it to be affecting where we have our cuts. So I'm gonna take his factor and plug it into color two. And then color one is gonna be a black. So for the factor, we're bringing in this guy here, like so. And if we control shift and left click, we can see that we have our cut still, and now we have some bump data on the rest of it. But we need to plug that into a bump node, so I'll hit shift A and search for a bump node. And I'll plug it in right here. Take our color into the height, and then take the strength down to a 0.1 so it's not too overwhelming. Now if I control shift and left click the shader, this is what we have currently. And if I plug our bump normal into the other bump normal, we now have some more bump data happening here, some more warping and stuff, but it's a little bit too, uh, what's it called? Natural, it's a little bit too man-made looking currently because the bump is all the same everywhere. So we're gonna do one more level of bump to finish this off. So I'll hit Shift A and search for a Voronoi texture down here. I'll take the vector into here and I'll hit Shift right click and drag across this node to give us this guy. So then I'll Control Shift and left click this Voronoi texture. So on this guy, I'm just going to change the blending mode here, or the randomness mode, or whatever you want to call it, to Minkowski. I think it's called the distance metric. But yeah, I'm going to change that to Minkowski. And then change the scale of this guy up to a 50. Then I'll press Shift A. I'm going to search for a math node. Then I'm going to make the function greater than. Then I'll take this color into the value. So if I control shift and left click, currently it's giving us half and half, half white, half black. And I'm going to change this threshold here to a 0.75 because this is going to be our uh, factor that we are blending two Voronoi's together. So I'm going to take this Voronoi and control shift D and move him down here. And I'll change this one scale to a 75. So then if I shift A, search for a mixed RGB node, if I plug this guy into the factor, then this top one's distance into color one, this bottom's distance into color two, we can control shift and left click to preview and we have some cool fun bump sort of like a nice carrot pattern there. So then I'll hit Shift A, search for a new bump node, like so, and then we'll be plugging him into here. Color into height, then we'll take this normal, plug it into this normal, but we want to switch the strength on this guy way down to something like a 0.05. So then I can Control Shift and left click our shader here, and now we have our finished carrot material. I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like on a carrot model real quick. So I'm just gonna take this guy, I'm gonna press Shift D, duplicate him, leave him in the same spot, I'll hide one of them. So then I'm gonna to go to edit mode here, go to a orthographic view by pressing one, then I'll hit Z, go to wireframe, make sure I'm in x-ray mode, and I'll select all these bottom vertices under the X mode, whoops, I don't wanna do it like that. Select all these guys like this. As you can see, they're selected, I'll press Z, go back to solid. Then I'm going to press scale, so S, Actually, before that, I'm going to turn on proportional editing. Then I'll press scale. I'm going to press shift Z so I don't scale it on the Z. And I'm sort of going to shrink this and then use the scroll wheel up and down. So we affect sort of everything kind of like this to give us a cool carrot shape like so. Then with everything selected, I'm going to scale shift Z. So now we have a cool carrot. So then I'm going to hit control A, apply the rotation of the scale. So currently I have the material applied to it by carrot. So if I go back to the rendered preview, as we can see here, we have our super awesome material 
finished in the renderer. And obviously, as I showed you earlier, we can change the amount of those lines we want to have affecting and how big we want simply by going back to the shading tab here. We can change the scale of the waist texture to like an eight, make the lines smaller and more fine. We can leave it at a four, and then we can also up this to make them thicker, and we can lower it to make them thinner, and that's how you can affect everything in a really cool way. So that's gonna be the finished material. You can also mess with the roughness if you want it to be like, oh, I just washed it, and so it's super shiny and wet, or you can leave it up as something like a 0.35 if you want something more realistic. And something I want to point out real quick is if you have a tiny carrot model like this and you apply the rotation and the scale, and then you go into your preview and the cuts are looking like way too big and they're not so small enough, an easy way to change the scale on that is if you go back to your shading, I'll go back and focus on it. You can go to your mapping here and then up this, just up your mapping node scale to like a five and that'll make everything smaller and you can adjust the scale like that here. So if you're not getting any of the cuts or anything showing up properly, it's probably because your model is a lot smaller and then you just need to up the scale. Anyways, see y'all in the next one.